Okay, friend, now I made this for Sunday dinner, but trust me, if you take this to any party or event or social gathering, this dish is sure to be the star of the show each and every time. If you can take a look at it and you've guessed it right, yes, that's right, y'all. Tonight, we're going to be making some nice, spicy, smoky, Liberian style. Okay, I said Liberian style, jollof rice. This popular West African staple is known for its amazing pop of flavor, spice, and smokiness. So no matter where you land on the online debate about this amazing dish, you're sure to love it each and every time. And I'm so excited to share my take on this popular rice with you. So keep watching for the step-by-step -step recipe. major staple or one of the major staples of Liberian cuisine and flavor is always going to be that smokiness. Today we're getting that smoky flavor from some smoked pigtail and some smoked ham hocks. We also have some cubed pork shoulder that we're going to be adding to the dish a little later. But let's prep our smoked and dried meats first because this is going to help us build the flavor in our jollof base. Salt pork can be very, well, salty. So one of the things I do to make sure that I get my meat as clean as possible is I rinse it first, add it to the pot, and we're going to boil a lot of that salt out of it before we can use this meat. So I'm going to boil it for the first time, pour that water out, and then when I get done boiling it for the second time around, that's when I'm going to start seasoning that pot. One of the amazing things about Liberian jollof rice is that you can adjust it to your taste. Don't eat pork, that's just fine. You can easily replace it with smoked turkey, smoked chicken, or any similar meats. Or if you like, I usually share it with my coworkers by swapping out the smoked meats and salted meats with andouille sausage. A lot of my friends tell me it reminds them of jambalaya or other similar rice dishes. Okay, our pot looks like it's ready for the second round of water boiling. So let's pour that first water out and let this simmer on the stove. For our fresh meats, we have the cube pork shoulder and we also have about four to five chicken thighs cut up into smaller pieces. So let's clean that before we season them and set them aside for the pot. Now that we're done seasoning our fresh meats, let's get back to the pot and check on our smoked meat. We're going to start building our jollof rice base by making this into a broth using the water that we've been boiling the meat in and adding some sliced onions and black pepper as well as seasoned salt and bouillon powder. I like my rice spicy, so this is where I also add a small habanero or scotch bonnet pepper in the broth as well. If you're ever in a rush making this for a particular event, or you just don't feel like being on your feet all day, here's something I learned from my parents on making the rice cooking process a whole lot easier. I'm going to add two and a half cups of rice to a large bowl. I'm going to clean it twice, rinse that water out, and then I'm going to add just enough hot boiling water to cover it, not to drown it, but just cover it and let it sit 
while I'm cooking everything else. That way, when I'm ready to add my rice to my jollof gravy base, it'll already be pre-softened or pre-cooked. Just try it. This is where the flavor and the color for this jollof rice dish comes into play. We have our gravy base that I'm chopping up into little quarters or cubes. We've got bell peppers, onion, garlic, plum tomatoes, and just a dash of ginger for me. It's a little too strong for my palate, but feel free to add as much or as little as you like. Once you're done chopping up everything, you can go ahead and add it to a blender and start making your gravy right away. But I want it to be a lot more smokier this time. So I'm going to drizzle my chopped up veggies with some olive oil, sprinkle a little bit of fine sea salt, and throw this in the oven for about 30, 35 minutes at 375. This is what it looks like after taking it out of the oven and man I wish you could smell through the screen because the flavor we haven't even started yet and it's already smelling just mm. let's take everything we just roasted in the oven throw in some ginger into a blender and this is going to be our gravy base Jell of rice is pretty much a one pot recipe because we're going to use each ingredient to build the flavor for the next one. So we're ready to fry up our fresh meats. I'm adding the chicken in piece by piece until it gets nice and golden brown on both sides. And then I'm going to do the same thing for my pork. You know I keep a nice hot blended pepper mix on deck at all times. So I'm just gonna add a few spoons of that into the oil just to wake it up, okay? veggie mix is starting to cook down I'm going to add two cans of tomato paste to the mix as well base starts to thicken up don't forget to taste as you go once you get comfortable with where it is with the thickness go ahead and add your next round of seasonings in this case I'm using some more seasoned salt bouillon powder black pepper and some crayfish powder Let's add in our fried chicken thighs and our fried pork shoulder and stir that in as well. Next, 
let's go ahead and add our smoked meat in the pot as well. And I hope you kept that broth like I told you to, because that's what you're gonna add to your gravy base next. After 15 minutes of cooking on medium to high heat, this is what our gravy base looks like. And let me tell you something. Go ahead and add one can of coconut milk. Don't ask no questions, just try it, okay? The flavor is going to blow your mind. Let's take that rice we've been pre-cooking on the side, drain it of all the water and add it to the pot. Just look at that. All that rice just waiting to soak up all that delicious flavor. After 15 minutes, let's go ahead and add in some mixed veggies. This adds to the flavor and it helps make it even more vibrant with color. After another taste test, I'm adding in a little bit more of my extra spicy pepper blend and a little bit of chicken bouillon seasoning. Now, how are you gonna eat Liberian jollof rice without shrimp? You know I had to add some shrimp in there. So I took some of the excess gravy from the pot and let that pre-cook some of my shrimp I had before adding it to the pot. I wait until the rice is nearly done because shrimp doesn't take that long to cook and I don't wanna overcook it. So let's stir this in and let it sit. tell if the camera could pick up all of the steam coming out of this bowl but this food is nice and hot okay so let's throw our rice on the plate I also made some oven fried chicken earlier let me know if you want to see a recipe video on that and of course we're going to top it all off with some nice cool fresh mixed salad Here it is guys, nice, smoky, delicious Liberian style jollof rice. Thank you, thank you, thank you for clicking play and letting me share a little piece of my world with you today. Please stay tuned for more recipe videos and feel free to meet me in the comment section with more suggestions. See you same place next time. Peace out.